welcome to the absolute mayhem of a podcast <laughs> because I can't fucking do anything today, it seems like. I'm Rasmus. And I'm Red. And I'm Jan. Uh, my name's Andy. Hey, Andy. And- <laughs> you don't need to start guys. like you're at AA though. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> uh, granted, uh, it's you we're talking about. Uh, there is always shenanigans. Yeah, it's, it's kind of it's kind of just you know. There's breathing, and then there's shenanigans. You got to do them both. Absolutely. Yep. And I guess you are also like a shark when it comes to shenanigans. If you stop doing them, you'll just die. Yeah, right. <laughs> as long as there's blood in the water, we're we're eating. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how the fuck are you doing, Andy? I am doing okay, really. All things considered, um, you know, taking a few hits here and there, randomly, but uh, yeah, but um, still still alive and still grateful to be so. Mm. Oh, Same. Awesome. We, we didn't plan this out. How, how should we do this? Should we actually talk about our weeks first? Or because we have Andy on before, so he kind of knows what he's getting himself into. Yes, yeah, so there, there's going to be three episodes. <laughs> there's there's yeah. the one where Rash is going to talk about Maker Central. <laughs> then, uh, then next we get to Andy. And in the third week, <laughs> Red and I get something to say. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that sounds vaguely accurate for some reason. Go ahead, Rash. Yeah, they exactly. want to talk about Mega Central, so go ahead. Yeah, give, give it to us. Give, give yeah. us the blues. Yeah, it was good. It was really good. I mean, you okay. all know this. I got Moving the hard goal of some good, good people. Moving on. <laughs> Let's go. What else are we going to talk about? <laughs> uh. <laughs> So how good was it? How, what did you make? Who did you meet? What did you do? What did you eat? Everything. A lot. I ate everything. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, but, down. and and so honestly, when it comes to meeting people, it's kind of felt weird because it not so that it had become trivialized, but it had become more normalized to be there, surrounded by all of these people and the atmosphere and all of it. Mm-hmm. So I never had that really overwhelming feeling. It's more like, oh, yeah, of course we're doing this again. And of course, like you that I've only seen on YouTube are suddenly here. Mm-hmm. So it's like, uh, I think Sila Foxlin was the only new person, quote unquote, from YouTube that I got a chance to talk to and meet. Mm-hmm. But I mean, apart from that, you, you basically know all the people who was there and you know all of our friends that was there. And I got to mm-hmm. like meet and hug all of them and talk to them. And I fed them all chocolate so they can like me again. <laughs> nice. It's a solid yeah. approach, actually. Yeah. It seems to be working. And it's much easier to carry than bacon. I found that bacon is, <laughs> you know, as an exchange of, of currency, it's great, yeah. but um, it's messy. Yes. <laughs> that being said, I also brought, uh, or I had a few things that I bought on, of Amazon I had shipped to Jamie's, including a lot of ludicrous pile of googly eyes. Nice. And I just and I just left them out on the table, and by the end there was hardly any left. And <laughs> they were. I, I saw else. people walk around with uh, with googly eyes on their tattoos and on their shirts, and <laughs> there was a banner so with cool. googly eyes and machines with googly eyes. And yeah, it. Uh, I'm not sure how many trace it back to me. Hopefully none. Uh, <laughs> But yes, uh, there, there was good guys and there was plenty Knowing of you guys who nice. raided one of the hotel bars somewhere and there's probably going to be good guys everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Oh, yeah. Some, some maintenance staff is cursing your name right now. <laughs> well, I, actually, uh, I was kind of good this time of actually like uh, going back into civilian from my blacksmithing clothes with all of the knives and leaving that kind of shit behind. So I don't think we had a lot of good guys around us when we were drinking. But I don't remember, so that could be speaking something about the drinking. I, Next year. Yeah, yeah. people's going to be now at the hotel bar. It's like, I I'm, I'm feel like I'm being watched. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. maybe. Uh, but last little final thing. Uh, we had our constitution day here in Norway yesterday. Oh. So I, uh, coming home from Maker Central, I went straight from the airport and to the dancing, which yeah. was a brilliant idea for another two hours of dancing after standing and walking yeah. for stupid amounts of hours for a weekend. Yeah. Uh, then I worked on Tuesday and then Wednesday we had our constitutional day and I spent four hours dancing again in the park in hot woolly Bunad stuff style national costume which is it's good to dance in but it's not good to be, stay cool in it's very warm does it smell kind of like a hockey uniform after you're done uh, <laughs> dancing for four hours 
immediately, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but then the lanolin sort of gets wet and it starts cleaning itself and it, it's fine-ish. <laughs> Emphasis on the ish. ish. As in, <laughs> it smells like fish. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Moving on. <laughs> uh, yeah, Red, Red, Jan, do you want to fight about it? No, because my week was uh, totally not interesting at all. I I walked uh, yeah, in the shop. Yeah, I mean, compared to Maker Central. Y yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. So not really. I, I I played with my 3D printer and resin and did mm. some improvement in the shop and and that that's it. Um, so yeah, really nothing interesting to to mention there. Which, so which yeah. can be a good thing. Uh, yes and no, but yeah. <clears throat> I, there's no car repair story, so I, I come uh, in as a plus. Not yet, not yet, not yet. Uh, it, it will be coming. It will be coming. I have, I have the, the inspection. Uh, how it's called? Uh, MOT. MOT. Yeah, in mm -hmm. December. So I bet I will have to to do some repair before that. So yeah. Yeah, but that's half a year away. You got plenty uh, of time. Yeah, but plenty can happen in in six months so he's, he's oh, gonna be we, we driving know there like yeah. should have just parked it on the street in paris should have just parked <laughs> it on the street. <laughs> yeah. yeah no but yeah it's been my week so jan how was yours um so the last weekend oh when did we guys talk about it so n nothing too out of the ordinary um work-wise i was working from home last week because my foot is still injured mm -hmm. And, um, is it getting better though? Excuse me. Is it getting better though? I'm kind of at the same stage. I okay. really oh. think it's gonna get better as soon as I have the new inlays, which I supposed to come in tomorrow. And I right. really hope that there's gonna be some improvement. But for now, it's not getting worse, but it's not getting better. So mm -hmm. I have a hard time walking barefoot or like with socks, and mm -hmm. I need to constantly wear my inlays or my like Birkenstock. Have you considered super glue and just putting the inlays on your foot? Oh, imputation. Yeah, not, not, <laughs> not sure if that's going to help it that much, but I'm um, not complaining too much. Uh, actually, we do, well, let's start from last week. Mm. So um, on Tuesday, well, I've been working from home. Tuesday, Steph and I had our 10th uh, year wedding anniversary. Yeah. So that was nice we went out. Done. Yeah, we well went done. out for a nice dinner, which I also know now is, I, call, I think, called the Rose Wedding. Is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. In, in Germany, yeah, it's a uh, Rosenhofzeit. Um, okay. So I had a really nice evening there with Steph. Then yesterday we had a company dinner. Uh, the new president and the old president visited us from Japan, uh, from the company, and then, well, they had meetings at the office, which I, I wasn't there <laughs> because I was working from home. So I'm kind of not mad, not, not mad about not having to be there and uh, in the evening we went out for a nice dinner which was actually fun because uh, they, they made a point of not talking too much about business and a little bit more of their personal life especially oh, with good. the old president I think he's <coughs> in his mid 70s and I've never seen him so relaxed ever since I started working there because it's his last year he's working as a consultant and then he's going to mm. be like out of the company and he looked 10 years younger than the last time <laughs> I've seen him. I bet. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, the thing about being a Japanese president, not being able to say no and they make your appointments for you and you basically just fly around in the whole uh, world to the mm. subsidiaries offices the whole time and you're representative. So you have to, you, they arrive, they go out in the evening for the dinners and everything. This time the dinner was at the last day and they've been here for like four or five days. So the jet lag wasn't that bad. But just mm. imagine being in your mid 70s, mm -hmm. being jet lagged, having to entertain and talk to the staff, then going back to the hotel and flying back the next day. So yeah, I, I, I wouldn't want to trade. But mm. it was really, that, that was also really nice. Yeah, and today we have a bank holiday in Germany on Thursday. So I worked... Yeah, as well. Okay. Nice. Yeah. I, I heard rumors about the bank holiday in Norway, but I, what, I, had, I had no time for that shit. <laughs> which holiday does it... What is it celebrating? Uh, Ascension Day. I yeah. believe it is in English. Uh, yeah. I think mm -hmm. this is correct. Virgin Mary going to the sky. Yep. Ah, gotcha. 
Exactly. No, I, because... I didn't know that it was an also Father's Day. Father's Day, anyway? Yeah. Okay. On a Thursday? Uh, in Germany, yes. You guys really? are weird. <laughs> I'm not denying it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the... Um, exactly. No, I got six hours of gardening in today. I started Ooh. at 10, then there was... Wait, wait, nice hold on. Uh, yeah, I'm, broken. I'm, yeah. No, yeah. it's not broken. It's, no, something, it's, with it, it's something with it's, the tendons. Yeah, something is fucked with it you sh that you shouldn't be using it. <laughs> and you wonder why you haven't been getting better? No, it's mm -hmm. also not getting worse. Well, amputation well, doesn't make it worse. It. it just means they just leave, go over there. Yeah. So, six hours of gardening. Great fun. <laughs> a lot of stuff happened in the garden. Had a nice yeah. barbecue in between. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I'm getting my new inlays tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We'll yeah, talk about nice. that in a week or two. I'm not complaining about my foot hurting at the moment. So You can't. You don't have the right to. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you notice how quick he wanted to get away from the garden as soon as we called him out. <laughs> yeah, and the last thing that happened is yesterday there was a s small package arriving uh, labeled by Amazon, and um, in there was a little game called the New Zelda. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, so it was good that it arrived yesterday and not on Tuesday, or else we would have had to postpone our dinner because. <laughs> Steph has been playing it non-stop for yeah, yeah. the last few hours at least. It's a question. Are you interested in playing it or are you just not allowed to yet? Um, how do I politically answer that? No, um, <laughs> she, she ordered it. She's looking forward to it. And I lately, I'm not a big video <clears throat> game player. So yeah. uh, I, I bet I'll get the itch at one point and then I start playing it. But uh, I haven't even played Breath of the Wild. You don't have uh, to. You can you can just skip that one. Okay. And go directly to Tears of the Kingdom. I'm waiting my turn for, to play it because the kid has been playing it for for a few days, and he's like, "Oh, if you if you want to start a game, you you can do it uh, too and and play." Yeah, but I can't. You're always playing it. Uh, so all I think, along. I think that's when you need to send him to bed. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. Getting, that, he's that's the nice thing about enough where uh, he probably tells Red when to go to bed. Yeah, also, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah go to bed. Also, it's a portable <laughs> console. He's probably yeah, just gonna true. unplug it, take it with him, and just go to bed with it. Uh, yeah. Not, not too bad. But when he goes to the toilets, that's what what he he does. Yeah. So he's 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 playing a lot. But I mean, the game has been out for like three days or something. Uh, mm -hmm. Less than a week, uh, he got it on the first day, and and I I don't feel like telling me, oh no, you can only play one hour a day. I mean, it's not fair. He's been waiting for the game for yeah. years, uh, so no, the, enjoy it. Uh, plus, it's it, it was bank holiday uh, too here and tomorrow. Uh, it's also holidays. Uh, then you have Saturday and Sunday, so he's uh, he's on for five five days, uh, including Wednesday. Wednesday, oh, wow. five days vacation. So he's he won't be able to lose it, use his legs by the end of the weekend. I wouldn't yeah, think. Yeah, no, because he has he still has a judo practice. So <laughs> good. That's, that's, so that's good. He's doing both, like learning physics, uh, playing Delta, and and learning and judo. Suddenly, he's read is really aware of the calendar of his child. Mm, yeah, like exactly. oh, this is where I can get an hour in. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That is great. Yeah, it's a, it's a. Actually, when I went out earlier to see Steph um, and see her, or when I saw her playing, I was just like, okay, that game is really good because she was staring at the screen while playing. And if she gets like in that focus zone, I know it's a good game. Yeah. Well, yeah. I. Yeah. I think it's made for makers because now the the game has piles of materials and um, abilities to stick things together and. You know, so it it definitely feeds into the maker mindset. I think. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah, there's a good chance for that. I I haven't seen it yet, and every time I try to talk to her, I get the look like, <laughs> "Go away, let me play." <laughs> Do you even live here? <laughs> exactly. So yeah, in two or three months, you will be able to to give it a try. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Ho hopefully. Hopefully. I mean, if it's bigger than Elden Ring, it might take a year or two. It depends who's playing. 
and and how many hours a day? Uh, yeah, okay, fair enough. Oh no, Steph is the um, Final Fantasy playing um, fraction. She loves to farm, so before she gets to the end boss, she will be completely, well, if it's possible, over leveled, overpowered with yeah. too much of everything yeah. to just stomp the last boss. She loves doing that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> That's yeah, Su- Susanna has to get everything in any location. She has to get everything. Every last apple, every last mushroom. <laughs> I did I'm that like, too when I was playing Skyrim. At the beginning, you start and you're, you're in a city. So I was gathering a lot of stuff. Completely useless during the game. <laughs> Pots <laughs> and wooden spoon. And yeah. You never use them. But yeah. I'm going to use them. You just carry them so you can walk noisily through a dungeon while trying <laughs> yeah. to sneak exactly and then you chuck him as a guard to distract him or something silly. <laughs> fun, fun, fun fact to skyrim did you know the the baskets that lay around you can just put them over the head of the guards and they won't and see it, anything you, because they yeah. actually have a line of sight and you can just what? or like at a shopkeeper you just can clear out the whole store yeah. <laughs> like right in front how, of them how did i not know this <laughs> any kind of spots or baskets it's, it's hilarious and if you try to do that and you don't have you don't have a strength built character you're going to be so over encumbered in the yeah. starting area that you won't even be able to leave town. <laughs> yeah, I, I I have done that. Where you're sort of you're crawling yourself from one shop to the other to pawn off all the, the things you stole. <laughs> oh, that is nice. Skyrim, I, I did that this week. I didn't mention, but I, if you've yeah, played that's, the that's game, really you know nice what it is. For people to listen to. Yeah, so that's the the quest marker that you that you put on the map when you're going somewhere uh, when mm-hmm. you play Skyrim, and I've been wanting to make that for I don't know how old is Skyrim? Maybe twenty 12, years old. Twelve, 12 years old. Twelve years old. So mm-hmm. twelve twelve years old. Um, I've been wanting to to make that for twelve years to put that on the front door of of the house. Ah. Uh... And, nice. and so yeah now it's done and i can finally put that on the door uh, tomorrow. <laughs> really so, nice okay. are you also going to put a couple of hands with we know to like put on your neighbor's door yeah yeah yeah, yeah i'm gonna do everything <laughs> <laughs> and all the armor sets and, uh, uh, and so, the sorry, shields but and... Sm- small last digression do you remember the symbols that the thieves guild have that they carve into like the door posts of the shops Sort of saying like what kind of alarm systems there's in there and all of that. Don't remember that, no. No, okay, that's the thing. So if you're part of the Thieves Guild, like you start to look for those things because it tells you what shops you should rob or not. I'm just okay. saying you have you have neighbors. Okay, <laughs> I, I I didn't play as a thief in in Skyrim. I was a why not? Mess, mess, because you need to do everything. P- play everything. Everything I, in Skyrim. I I I did three runs and, and ah, I, rookie I, numbers. I, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but none of them as a thief. So yeah, I I need to do four. They don't yell alarm when they're dead. Yeah. Just saying. Exactly. <laughs> That's why I was an assassin. So. But moving say, beautifully over into the topic of the day, <laughs> or or asking Andy what he did this week. Ah, well, yeah. I've it's kind of kind of segueing is uh, I've been really looking at the. Um, the Tears of the Kingdom, the first shield that you get is the old wooden shield. And uh, I think I might give that a go. I think I might um, make Ooh. make one of those just for fun. You uh, already made one like two years ago, right? From, yeah, I made the, Breath of the Wild. Yeah, the Fisherman Shield yeah. um, from Breath of the Wild. And then I had, in process, I had the Kite Shield um, about halfway done. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, that didn't work out so well, so yeah. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> There's a lot of things gone. Yeah. Uh, do you want to explain that whole storyline sort of, sort of quickly? Sure. Um, yeah. So um, my garage shop. I um, February first of of this year. Um, I decided that it would be <clears throat> environmentally uh, sound to dry out some boiled linseed oil in some sawdust and kind of spread it out and yeah. uh, get ready to, to throw it away. And um, uh, 10 hours later, uh, there was a, 
spontaneous combustion and um, the whole shop went up and uh, pretty much everything that I had messed around with for 30 years, uh, yeah. uh, 30, 25 um, was gone. So, um, Which we have to say is not very nice for the environment. We do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> way easier to just pour out the, the, the boiled linseed oil. Yeah, yeah. A bit uh, con counterproductive, but <laughs> that's absolutely that's absolutely right, sir. Well, we learned. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I'm allowing myself to make a joke about that, but it's because oh, you yeah. told, told me it was okay too. Uh, hey, but... at this point, you got if you can't laugh about it, you know. But you know, the night that it happened, uh, 2 a.m. Um, we were sitting in the cop car outside after they banged on the door and the firemen were all there and um, Susanna and Fiona and I were in the cop car and, and um, Susanna said, the only things that matter are right here in this car. So, yeah, so, so that's kind of been from the very get go has been our, uh, we're really trying to focus on that, that it'd be super easy to, kind of be defined by an event like that. But, um, you know, we've just really, again, we're just so super fortunate. And then, and then the community came together in a way that I can't talk about here because I will start crying <laughs> literally. Mm -hmm. Um, just, uh, you know, the GoFundMe that Daniel Harju, uh, started, uh, yeah. was just went to crazy numbers and, um, and then, you know, um, people that, that, uh, said, Hey, look, um, I bought these tools and, um, I don't feel like I'm using them, uh, enough to justify having them. So I'd like to send them to you. Mm -hmm. So there's been five or six of those that, and the crazy part is, um, it seems like as I'm bumping along, trying to make stuff again in, in a different little uh, one car garage. Um, I, I always seem like I have just about what I need. It, it's very odd that, you know, these people randomly sent yeah. stuff. Um, the Illinois Woodworkers group on Instagram, uh, a couple of the guys just took a truck around Chicago and people tossed in, you know, bigger tools into the truck and those guys showed up and with a you know, American truck full of tools that <clears throat> it just super crazy. So it's been, uh, you know, there are times as a, as an older maker in our world, um, you know, you kind of, what, what are you now? 24, 25? <laughs> yeah. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> Mentally 12. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, I'm 60, I think, or 61. And, um, you know, you got kind of, kind of get to thinking like, you know, maybe, maybe it's time to, you know, pass the torch and, and let, let another generation, you know, take, mm. take the lead. And, um, no, nobody, yeah, will no, allow no. That. <laughs> uh, nobody will yeah. allow Andy Berkey to retire. Just, just so you know, especially Andy Berkey. <laughs> Obviously <laughs> yeah. that is, I, that's my point, Red is, is I was kind of in that creeping towards that and then now there's no way I can't, I'm, mm. you know, I, um, I owe too many people, too many things. And, yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry to interrupt. I, I totally understand the feeling, but I don't think it's a, it's a good reason to, um, do it. I mean, uh, yeah, of course people came together and, and, and offered mm -hmm. you, uh, help, uh, money, tools and everything. And I, I bet you, feel that you owe them something um i don't i don't look at it that way um i think that the community and the makers and the people online owe you to be a fantastic maker to be creative to be inspiring and that's why they wanted to give away some tools so you can you can make again because we we take benefit from watching you work um, so I totally understand the feeling that, that you, you need to keep on going to thank those people. I don't think that's the way it works. I mean, the, the people who, who shared money and tools just want you to keep going. If you feel like keeping this, going, moving, I, I, moving I, I forward. Definitely and, and a win-win situation there. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah right. Absolutely. Yeah. 
I, I would even argue it's the flip side. People are giving back to you, Berkey, now because of what you've already done, not because of what you will do. Yeah, that that was a you know shorter version of what I was trying to say. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. Yeah, that's that's. Um, it's yeah, easier to I, say things when you don't have French in between. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna shut up now. <laughs> no, go won't. watch my kid play Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> no, that yeah, you're right. There there is it's a mixed bag, and I don't care which way it it. Um, you know, because in my head things change on a daily basis, but, but yeah, I, um, yeah, I think I'll, I'll uh, just once we get things sorted, uh, you know, be focusing on having again. To me, uh, this isn't an option. Um, I do need to make. Um, it's what I do. Since I've been lower on <clears throat> um, tooling and all of that, uh, you know, I've been cooking crazily a lot and um you know we have the sewing room upstairs that um i haven't gotten into but i i need to so you know there's a lot of uh yet to be defined making to be done um i have a question for you andy um I, may, maybe we can start the conversation from there um i i bet it has been like a, a, a very difficult night for you when you woke up maybe in the middle of the night with people banging at your door saying, hey, your shop is on fire. It, it must have been crazy. I can just imagine uh, that thing happening to me because, uh, yeah, tools, uh, as a maker, the tools that we own are, are very precious because that, that it, it's not, uh, um, it's, a, it's a mean to an end, so so to speak, like that's right. what allows us to make and to feel good and to be in the in the zone and to produce something for ourselves, clients or friends or people we love. So I, I just can't imagine having uh, being in that situation, losing all my tools and my shop. Um, what I'm interested in is is how do you um, where do you go from there? What's what's the first step when that happens? What what's the um, What's the first thing that you do towards rebuilding a shop or to well, just get going again? <clears throat> Getting my head right again, I think, was probably the hardest part. I realized that, that the loss, uh, because it's such a personal space, mm -hmm. um, it's very much a personal loss mm -hmm. when that went away. So, and I, like I said, on Maker's Waffle, one of the things that, that I remember, a lot of that time is a bit of a blur, but one of the things I remember is Georgie, um, my, my sort of nephew, um, the next, uh, after school, the next day, he, he needed to come see it. And, mm. you know, uh, besides me, he's probably spent the most time of anybody in that, sh in that space. And, um with his dad and, and me and, and he, I came out of the house and he was standing looking into the, to the burned out shop. And I heard him say that <clears throat> that was my favorite place in the whole world. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, yeah. and, and, you know, that gives me goosebumps to this right now. And, um, but, you know, um, as we were trying to talk through it, it's, um, there's just there's just an opportunity that's pretty unique to reset and retool and um, kind of kind of just you know especially when you're in this in your early 60s you know you're thinking about okay you know I've had to do a lot of tooling because of the work that I was doing in the past and uh, not all of it was um, high grade so you know maybe there's less tooling but better tools the ones that yeah. i you know there's all sorts of that type of thing and then and then just focusing again on what i've always said about big projects is you know just just do the baby steps don't mm. don't worry about the big picture and just do something that makes things better incrementally uh and so it's been an interesting it's been an interesting headspace um 
but again, I think, you know, both Suzanne and I were, were very focused on um, reminding ourselves that we're just really fortunate to be alive for one thing, because yeah, yeah. we didn't know a thing was happening before the cops started banging on the front door. And uh, it was well, well engulfed by the time that we became aware of what was happening. So do you do you my last question and, and then I, I'll let you uh, guy uh, speak to do you see now um, what happened as an opportunity to rebuild the shop and to um, re recreate a new space uh, like it, it's it's uh, uh, it's really difficult for, for me to <clears throat> um, explain what I have in mind um, but Uh, when when I got the apartment, I knew that the room I'm sitting in right now would will will become my my shop, will become my space. So I had a blank page I could I could use for myself and create everything that I I I, I ever wanted. Um, do you do you think that the new shop, because I, I there will be a new shop, I'm sure. Mm -hmm is kind of this blank page for you and you will be able to rebuild rebuild a shop that will be better than the old one do you do you see it that way yet or or is it too too far too soon? no i i think so i mean because of um where i am in a what we call a historic neighborhood you guys would laugh at it but it's you know 150 we do years we do, we do. yeah <laughs> for here it's historic <laughs> for you guys it's yesterday's newspaper but um but you know i have to say in the same footprint so mm -hmm. the the concrete slab that was there uh that's what uh we'll build on top of Yeah. So uh, it's not going to change dramatically as far as the room goes. Um, mm -hmm. I will. I had seven foot ceilings. Which Jan, what's that? Probably seven foot. Yeah, it's two two meters and forty two two meters and fifty centimeters. Yeah. something like that, I believe. So, so I, and I'm thinking to go to a nine foot, which is almost three meters. Oh, so mm -hmm. yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. So just to get a little more. Uh, room up there and then you know I'm going to change the heating and air conditioning uh, okay. system um, that'll definitely change and, and take a fire hazard out of out of the shop which is which is good um, five stories but, um, um, of basement with the hidden elevator and <laughs> yeah jo George started uh, uh, designing um, the rebuild right away and uh, the two th elements that he included in the initial designing was a fireman's pole yes mm -hmm. yes <laughs> and a foam pit so um, yes. we're, trying, yes. we're trying to work those in <laughs> that's a good kid <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. So he got they, his priorities. They restrict Susanna you. wanted a lamp, a lap pool on the on the roof. So we're we're trying to. <laughs> that's, that's really good. Yes, to all of that. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, um, the shop has always been very. Um, what's the word where you can just like move things around? Modular. Modular, mm -hmm. right? Right, exactly. Um, so I will. Uh, fix on that again that's always i'm just comfortable with that um and I, i don't tend to go for big machinery like you see at, you know jimmy's or something like that where <clears throat> there's a ton of square feet square footage and you can just have these spaces for big machine industrial type machines mm -hmm. i've never um done that so so um it's going to be There'll be some improvements, but it won't be radically different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, <clears throat> and I think this is this ties in with mm -hmm. what Red said, is uh, can you, or do you start feeling some excitement now that it's going to the planning of the new shop? Because um, I mean, I bet, like, there's so much stuff that has to be on your mind. With, I, I know that endurance always takes, like, a long time till that it's through. And it, 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 I know from a lot of people when I used to live in the U.S., what not just with something that burned down with just with possession that got either stolen or damaged be it water or anything else even after everything was rebuilt years later they were still kind of dealing with that and they said yeah. well they were happy when they finally the old one was just closed off and then they had the new one 
but yeah. for you it's something you can actively work on basically at the moment so it's just do you, do you feel some excitement for that like are you i i do jan as of two days ago it it sounds like the guy who's gonna take a piece of machinery and, and pull pull it down mm -hmm. it, it sounds like uh very very soon we're gonna get the, the demolition permit so that's when it's really gonna accelerate for me because now i can go from planning to actually starting to stand walls Wait, and you you still have the burnt husk standing there yes yeah oh wow. so between the delay of the insurance company like jan was saying and then an extended period of permits and things from yeah. the city um it's we're, we're we still have it sit and you know that's it's hard because you know every day you walk outside and there yeah. it is you know again <laughs> yeah i was gonna say like that's gotta be really interesting a really interesting feeling to have that reminder straight up in your face all the time yeah it is a bit weird it really is you know you can't get away from it but i will tell you this i have a new appreciation for how lucky i am to not have to deal with bureaucracy and um all of that very yeah. much in my life i i i mean i i work with the church a lot of times but i'm usually in control <laughs> yeah. so yeah. by the time they find me uh, you know i'm i'm uh they need me <laughs> mm -hmm. so it's um you know when you're at the mercy of a guy that just says yeah no that's not how we do things or yeah mm. it's we passed it on to a different department or you know it's like i just don't have to deal with that very much and i never appreciated how cool that is mm -hmm. yeah are you <laughs> gonna keep something from the the burn shop like a, as a memento yeah matter of fact I, we we were just talking this morning i have some plaster castings that were up in the rafters <clears throat> and they came down and kind of broke and have you know they're black and mm -hmm. i i think i'll do something like that where i encase some of them in in resin or something mm -hmm. to, just as a memento i don't mm -hmm. have a lot of um super i mean like you were saying you know tools are tools right yeah um and i've always been on this crusade um in the community of it's not about the tools it's about mm -hmm you know, what we can do with tools, right? Yeah. They're just, they're just a tool, literally in the, in the sense of the word. And uh, so I, I don't, there's not a lot of things that I have a sentimental attachment to. Um, so yeah, just uh, getting the capacity to make like I have in the past is what I'm really super amped about. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, we're, we're collecting um, bits and pieces. You know, we gotta be careful with the money from the mm. insurance company because yeah. you know you can't just uh, it's not just an open checkbook you gotta yeah. you gotta be careful yeah. so <clears throat> uh, like how has the insurance thing been like i mean the, the horror stories from especially from america is that like they are an absolute bitch to deal with no matter what but in your case it sounds like it's been going fairly easy well it's been weird for us because um the shop was one department, the vehicles were another department, and then ah. the damage to the house, which wasn't a lot, a lot, but just mm. a little bit. That was a different one. So two out of the three of those, I can't complain too much. Um, mm. the, the, you know, but, you know, I took over three weeks to make a spreadsheet of all of the loss of the tools and everything uh, mm. from the shop. And, um, put that into a spreadsheet and now they've been going through that and <clears throat> and you know pretty soon i'll get their response to that and then we'll work back and forth but yeah yeah it's been a little frustrating but again you know when you look at it through just being grateful that we have insurance at all yeah. um you've been able to to have a new cause already yeah it's super weird the the car part of it was so both both vehicles were um parked like right outside mm -hmm. but close enough where the fire got them and the, the firemen had to kind of go through them to get there and in, in a literal sense it sounds like <laughs> well no not literal but, <laughs> you know rubbing yeah. hoses on them and 
they were yeah, both they, they, cold. Yeah. <clears throat> but over here, uh, we have both European cars. So Susanna's uh, turbo diesel Jetta uh, was ruined, and then my um, my Euro Ford uh, van was also messed up. Well, those are kind of hard to find over here, which is one of the reasons we have them. Um, but the crazy thing was, is um, those were gone on a on a tow truck that afternoon. The, the company oh, wow. said, "Here, you know, here's your replacement uh, oh, monies," nice. and yeah. they got those out of there. Gone, done. So you got so, a Carmangia now. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> I do not have a Carmen Dia. But the weird thing was, was <clears throat> I answered an ad for a Eurovan. Um, and we went to the uh, car lot thing. And we pulled into the car lot and we had to go around a turbo diesel Jetta, just like my wife's, <laughs> to get to the Eurovan. <laughs> so we, we bought both of those with one check. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that was the that was the start, and I thought, oh, this is going to be easy, you know. <laughs> so it's it's slowed down significantly since then. Yeah. Yeah. But we felt really fortunate to uh, to get a different Eurovan and um, and the the Jetta station wagon. We dearly love that car, so uh, we're very fortunate in that regard. Yeah, station wagon not a common sight over in the U.S. No, especially not in the the Jettas, uh, the turbo diesels. They just mm -hmm. don't. Um, I was I was shocked when we, I mean, we literally stopped the the car, the, the rental car that we were driving in, and looked at each other like, "What mm -hmm. just happened?" And uh, there it was. So that, that's that's a good thing, though. Mm -hmm. that at least yeah. some things in all of this shittiness is coming easy back. Yeah. Yeah, I I wish it would have been the last thing, but it was the first thing, so yeah. we're still still can't complain. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, maybe a weird question, but is is there some? I mean, maybe it's too early even to ask this, but uh, there's this thing about the more stuff you have, the more sort of mental clutter you have. Have you Spot had? On. Have you had That's any a... feelings about this? That like, yeah, a lot of your things that you that nearly define you have burned up but has you feel ended up feeling some kind of i don't know uh retrieval from the, all of that or absolutely it's i call it mental baggage yeah it's just stuff that i need to finish like a project that i i lost interest in and it's still there but i can't throw it away because it's a project mm. um tools uh like from my grandfather yeah you know who was a um, you know, in his eighties, he took up woodworking and, oh. you know, so it was stuff I was never going to use, but I couldn't get rid of. Mm. There was a lot of that baggage and well, even, you know, uh, silicone molds that I had made, I, I was constantly struggling with, uh, I need these to be saved for posterity. But on the yeah. other hand, you know, what are you going to do with that? You're going to sell them? You know, they're crazy. And how many of those <laughs> are you actually going to keep from all of the different bits of molding you're making? Right, right. So, uh, but it's it's an excellent observation. There was a huge amount of that where mm. uh, the blank slate that uh, Red was talking about is, is a beginning that's clean, right? Yeah. And, you know, it's always in my in my world, it's always been just sort of whatever space you can find with whatever tools you have, just try to make something. And, um, which is cool on one hand, because you get really inventive when, um, much like when I, uh, lived in the Caribbean, we didn't have the appropriate tooling. And so we just invented ways of, of getting the same thing done. And, um, I'm kind of back in that mode again, which I kind of like that chaotic, that uh, scrappy bit of right. like overing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm kind of enjoying that if I'm going to push it, you know, it's yeah. 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 But the no, frustrating part is you feel like a kid going off to kindergarten most days with, you know, new 
new uh, tools and things, but you don't know how any of them work and none of them mm. feel familiar. And <laughs> yeah. so, so you, you're a bit lost there. This is something I'm actually really interested in. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you received some tools you said from people, but what was like the yeah. first tools you went out and got yourself? Like what was the first, because we already had discussions, like what's your first tool? Like you hear it often, like what's the first thing you should get? Um, yeah. when you start, if you pick up woodworking. Yeah. So what was it like without even a second thought, like the first thought is like, oh, first of all, I need to pick up this. Uh, was just a general kit bag of okay. um, uh, driver drill, the dr mm. cordless driver drill mm -hmm. is kind of, you know, uh, very important. And then, uh, you know, screwdrivers, hammers, um, all that kind of real uh, basic stuff. But to be honest, we have over here these things called box stores, and they're kind of, big. Um, yeah, they're big and, <laughs> and all of that. But um, you're not going to get anything specialty there, but you can yeah. get a lot of stuff there, mm -hmm. right? Mm. So I was in, and I was kind of trying to figure out, I didn't want to buy too much because I didn't know how insurance would, you know, compensate. and <clears throat> But it was weird because I did buy a, a kit bag and, and a driver drill and a few things, just three or four hundred bucks worth of stuff. And uh, but on the way out, it was a super weird feeling. I almost I felt like starting to cry because I think what it was was um, none of them. I, I I didn't feel like they were mine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and just the process of making decisions where, you know, is this bit better or this one, those have been made a hundred times before. Yeah. And, but this time it felt, I felt the loss yeah. um, mm -hmm. at that moment, which was super weird, but I just like beelined for the van. I, by the time I got there, I <laughs> had kind of <laughs> gotten myself together, but it was a weird moment that matter of fact, I came home and told Susanna about it. And I was like, yeah, this weird thing just happened. And Mm -hmm. initially there was much like losing a parent or whatever loss that you have in your family. Mm. Um, it, it hits you at really weird times and yeah. no, nobody can script it. And there's no uh, recipe, no roadmap for going through it. You know, it, it's just, it's grieving. It's a loss. Yeah. And um, how is she doing by the way? Susanna's doing well. Doing well. We're, uh, I think we'll be, especially uh, for her getting the shop torn down will be a huge step. Yeah. And, um, but we're trying to be, you know, super aware of each other, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because, you know, you go through uh, ups and downs and, um, but yeah, we're, we're doing well. We're, we're doing well. And, and she's, yeah. <clears throat> and, and Fiona's, doing well too so that's great <laughs> it, it must have been a, a big change in in the way you live your life because mm. you were spending a lot of time in the shop right and, and and so now you you don't have anywhere to go beside being in the house probably so yeah. uh, true. I, I mean I, I i i don't mean that in a bad way like it's always no, <laughs> no but i i, I see erasmus laughing so. yeah i was like well like suddenly so realized like oh i need to spend time with this woman <laughs> well, no, oh, he's looking at us three and we always like oh we know what we're talking about yeah <laughs> no but that space you know i would go out there early in the morning to i hate clipping this is a weird thing but i hate clipping fingernails and toenails in the house mm -hmm. because you know they fly off everywhere yeah so, that's so you, where did, I you did do that it. in a shop yeah Okay. And cut That's my what hair. the grinders are for. <laughs> <laughs> but that's actually been a hassle because that's, you know, cutting my hair. Again, I don't like doing it in the shop because of the buzzers. They flip it everywhere, you know? Yeah, so yeah. out in the shop, you just do it and it falls on the floor and you get swept up the next time. <laughs> yeah. So from that to, you know, that's where the beer fridge was and, you know, we'd pull up the barbecue right outside the door. And a lot of times that's where we'd hang out. And, mm. and, uh, you know, George and Zach would come over and, and, uh, you know, we, we'd, we'd, 
be out there for hours just hanging out sometimes. Mm -hmm. So it was a very, you know, and, you know, so much, so many uh, different makings happened out there from clay to sewing to, you know, we put up big sheets of plywood so that um, we could starch our quilts out there and, you know, just everything happened out there. And um, yeah, so that, that was a loss of, that was a living space for us. Yeah. Yeah. Also. How did the, the neighborhood uh, react to the fire? In fact, how, I, how, I, the neighborhood, the, the people uh, living next to you. Uh, Side question to that. Uh, we know you as like the mad maker genius. Do the rest of the community just look at you as mad? And <laughs> oh, the local one? Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 they enjoy it. You know, I, I've been um, pretty adamant that, uh, so we have a 16 foot, what's that, Jan, uh, five meter wide door that opens to the street. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. roll up door and you know a lot of times that's open so and in our neighborhood a lot of people there's a park right in a block away so a lot of people are on the sidewalk and mm -hmm. the big man Buddha you know is is on that wall where it can be seen from oh, the yeah. street so yeah. people get the net that you know there's there's odd stuff going in there <laughs> and uh, <laughs> when the sea when the seymour was uh in the pothole oh, you yeah. know people would look at it and look at the <laughs> be like oh okay but yeah the um the community's been really really supportive locally and uh you know they they want to see the weird stuff happen again so mm. uh, i think that's... most people do i think most people like the weird <clears throat> stuff It's it's just that I think a lot of people are slightly intimidated in the beginning. Like, yeah. who is this person who dares to be weird? Oh, boy, this is right on because we live in a magical time where um, when I was in my, you know, 20s or whatever, um, weird was just weird. And, and yeah. now because of the Internet, we're empowered, right? We're, yeah, very much we, so. We can use it like a bludgeon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's don't, don't no gatekeepers. Me. For our art, there's no gatekeepers anymore, yeah. right? Yeah. No one, I have two universities in my town that have excellent art departments, right? So um, at the local art center, they're all on the board of the, of the art center, right? So they say who gets into the art center and who doesn't. Um, but you know what? Um, I don't need to be in the art center now. Uh, hmm. My art is art <laughs> is known all over the world. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks to guys like you. And um, so, you know, it's I know that they kind of I'm not sure that they're entirely comfortable with it because I'm untrained. Um, but, you know, I if people are uncomfortable with what you and your work i think that's a really healthy thing that's yeah. more of a time a good thing yeah yeah i mean it's important to challenge people i think yeah yeah especially and, when it comes to art mm -hmm. and, and i think it's a good reminder to us to not in our small ways be gatekeepers ourselves right hmm. um get on in here and 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 you know let's bang elbows and see what happens right if uh I mean, that's the big thing about for me, because I've always said that I've lived in this weird world between I'm too arty for the trades and I'm too tradey for the arts. Right. Mm -hmm. Nobody, nobody likes. I used to say nobody likes me. Now I find You've that been there's proven a lot of, wrong. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's weirdos like you that really do. Yep. Right. Yep. So are you scared yet? <laughs> Scared. I started this bonfire. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah, that's probably not the best analogy. <laughs> Let me just write this down so that I don't say that again. <laughs> that was kind of where I was going when I was asking about the Dimberhood, how up they, they reacted, because um, I feel that um, someone working 
uh, I mean, I, I, I make noise. My, my neighbors know what I'm doing, and especially when I'm, uh, I, I go to my parents to, to play in the forge or do metal working or whatever. They know what that, what's going on. I'm, I'm there, I'm making noise, that's okay. They, they accept it because, well, they don't have a choice. Um, <laughs> make stories. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, but when when something that um, sad uh, happens, when someone loses his shop, his house, or if the, like there is a tragedy in life, it, uh, nobody's dead. Fortunately, nobody's right. hurt. Fortunately, but still, it's a loss. As you said, it's a, it's like a grief because you you you've lost something that was very dear to you, a place where you spent a lot of time over the years and 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 on a daily basis. Um, I feel that in that kind of circumstances, people reveal themselves to you, like how they react is usually always a good surprise. Even the neighbor that you, you can't stand uh, or the neighbors that can't stand you because you're making too much noise or because you're, you're, you're working with your door open and it can be annoying and you're making dust and whatever. When, when the shop burns, um, those people can can come and say a, a nice word and help you rebuild or whatever uh, uh, give some support and, and that's what's important i think that not only in your case but to see that uh, through difficult times people can can be very generous and, and and nice to each other and and give money and tools and time and just support and, yeah. and which is very nice to see because we are I mean, I don't want to sound too profound or whatever, but we are in a fucked up world, uh, and 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 those times are difficult. It's not like the Great War or anything, but it's getting harder and harder to just have good relationship with people that you know or don't know. So right. when something yeah. like that happens and people just come forward and 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 say something or do something, it's always like a warm feeling a bit. It's absolutely true. Um, we, it was funny. Um, we had a, a, a single um, lady that lives down the street come by that night with um, a couple of different types of soup and some cookies and um, brownies, I think, some kind of cake. Um, just knocked on the door and said, you can either freeze this or eat it now, but I just... I felt bad, so I cooked all day for you. <laughs> and it was really just nice. like, and yeah. you know, we were so like, feel like we'd been hit with a bat that we didn't even realize that we were hungry. Yeah. And it was, you know, really good soup. And, mm -hmm. and it was like, man, you can't, how do you, how do you uh, not just say thank you for that? Because yeah, sure, it was yeah. well needed and, and I told her later, I said, it was, it was like, you know, was, you bring that kind of stuff to a funeral here in the States. <laughs> <laughs> she said, well, you know, I figured you might be feeling like that. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that goes a bit back to the whole grieving <clears throat> thing that it doesn't need to be like a concrete loss that you're grieving. You can also grieve the possibilities. Oh like, yeah. Like, like the potential future of something. Yes. And and memories. Like, and yeah. Memories, as well. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, um, uh, my, my nan going through dementia and being 94 now, it's like, yeah, no, we are all already kind of grieving because the future with her is clearly so limited. Mm. Like, yeah, right. physically, she might hang around for another 10 years just because you're stubborn. Mm. But mentally, she's already going. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. that, that's a really weird thing as well. It, did, did it happen to you, Jan, when you left the US? Because it, it definitely happened to me when I left Japan. Like all the possibilities, all this yeah. project I had over there were gone the day I put my, myself in a plane to come back to France. Oh, and I was. I to go through the whole process of grieving to just overcome this feeling. The only thing that kept me going, going back from the US, because I wasn't planning, like I didn't want to leave the US, it was that in my job, I did not have the chance of getting mm. up and rank any higher or like changing mm. my job easily because the, as an electronic technician, as one as the only jobs, 
it's not um, my apprenticeship does not count mm -hmm. in the US because they have different codes. So oh. I was basically it's it's the same as not having learned mm -hmm. anything. Of yeah. course, you have the knowledge in your job and everything, but it's not that I could get self-employed or anything with the kind of qualifications I had. Okay. So for me, it was when I moved back to Germany, the only thing that kept me going was that I'm only going to be staying in Germany for about a year, like use it as a home base and then continue to like Sweden, Norwegian. That was my plan when I arrived mm -hmm. because I could not bear the thought after four and a half years moving back into but I, I moved into a different town, but only like 15, 20 kilometers away from where I mm. used to grow up. So for yeah. me, that was like going to Sam's the, the starting yeah. point and just being at that point where I said it's like, no, which looking back now is absolutely stupid because the best thing that happened is I met Steph like a month mm -hmm. later and now I live yeah. 20 um, kilometers away from my parents. But it is for me, a completely different life than what I imagined when I was 20. Yeah. So it's now a big I'm... big thing, though. That whole moving... But you, you sort of... Yeah, uh, but I... It, it sounds like you it, felt like you got back to start and exactly, failed but, at something. Um, yeah, not, not, yeah, not as a failure, but not where I wanted to, to be. <clears> yeah, <throat> because yeah. I was okay. so happy to leave Germany when I was mm. <laughs> in my 20s or like in the beginning when I was 20. And then coming back, yeah, it felt like a defeat. Right. Um, but then it just opened up the possibilities and uh, because I always had in my mind that like I can't be successful in Germany because I my school grades were too bad my apprenticeship like the grades weren't too good everybody's just looking at like have you studied and stuff like that so this was all in my mind and mm -hmm. I figured out well I learned to work hard and overtime over in the US and when I got back I just applied the same principles and managed well i had to change jobs to companies because it's hard to get up in a company but every time i changed companies i got to the point where i'm at now so um i'm i'm quite happy at the stage of my life where i'm at right now but nice yes it was uh really hard moving back um like borderline being depressed about it mm. because i arrived here in october and it was just the I don't know, the German mentality and everything that I just like, oh, I, I arrived and I was not even out of the airport. I was, can I get, just please get on the next plane and fly back? Yeah. Because I hate every single second here. I have a feeling. Andy, what's the next step for you? Oh, uh, the next step is um, the demo should happen hopefully next week or maybe the week mm -hmm. after. Mm -hmm. Um and then I've, um, I'm collecting bits and pieces, you know, um, doors and windows and getting all that stuff sort of stored away. And, and then, uh, then we start frame, framing the, sh the walls back and, uh, I'm, I'm amped, I'm amped to go, get going. And, and, I bet. Uh, you know, we're trying to, you know, we try to keep it in perspective, but, uh, but yeah, I'm super amped and, see uh it's been a while since i've done any framing like that big framing so it'll, oh, you, i'm a little yourself. out of shape you're gonna build it yourself yeah uh, you yeah could, i think wow. so yeah you're gonna in, do in a order... neighborhood barbecue that's the best thing i can recommend but instead of a barbecue you just hand out tools and say it's like oh listen up muggles <laughs> 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 today you're gonna exactly. learn something useful and i'm gonna have a shop at the end of the day <laughs> yeah exactly uh, yeah it's it, it'll be it'll be uh, a good thing and it'll happen pretty quickly um the main thing here would be to get it what we call uh, a big step in framing is getting it dried in and that is yeah. you know getting the walls up getting the sheeting on them and then the roof on and mm. then and then you have a, a room to work with right mm. and uh so yeah that's that'll be that'll be a big day i think there will be beer spilt that day yeah, hopefully. That's what it should be. <laughs> yeah. it, what's what's kind of one uh, a few tips maybe for other people with shops? I mean, I play with fire on a daily basis, but also I kind of expect things to catch fire spontaneously. So I at least try like to think I have routines more set in place and more like all kinds of combustible things are usually kept way well away from everything that goes hot. Right. But uh, 
you say it started with linseed oil rags, but that's also, I think, something you've done plenty of times before. Yeah, yeah. And um, the, the fire investigator, you know, they have to treat it like it could be arson or it could be, you Insurance know. Insurance fraud or. It, yeah. It, mm. So, but by the time we kind of walk through it, because he was going, okay, you know, what could have started it on this wall? Mm. And I was like, there's nothing there. I mean, you know, there's a beer fridge and a drill press. And so we kept talking through it and talking through it. And then I remembered, you know, it was such a small, inconsequential thing mm. that I didn't even remember it. And, yeah. and then all of a sudden in the middle of the con in conversation or the interrogation, um, mm. I dropped my head and said, I, I know what happened. And he already knew, mm. but, yeah. but I guess the takeaway, if I were to put anything out into the, to the community, um, is just, you know, chemicals, man, <sighs> learn from my mistake of not giving them enough respect. Yeah. Um, you're not going to go too far wrong, taking a little extra time to separate things and, and appropriately dispose of them. And, um, that I, I know it sounds embarrassingly simple, but that would be my takeaway is, you know, cause I've always been pretty careful with like personal, you know, safety, you know, wearing masks and stuff around chemicals and, and gloves, you know, big gloves. And, but I just didn't give enough respect for what it could do on its own over the course of 10 hours. Right. Hmm. Because it went from totally innocuous, you know, harmless to inferno in, uh -huh. in 10 hours. Yeah. So, yeah. And when it's, when it first gets going, it goes quick. It really, really does. Fire is a, it's a, it's a living, breathing dragon that wants what it wants and it takes what it wants. Yeah, yeah. very much so. so. Something else you can do is also take a lot of pictures of everything that you own, especially in the shop. It's yeah. not going to prevent the fire to happen, but it may help with the insurance company after. Absolutely. If something happens. What we did is we went through uh, that first week afterwards, uh, my buddy Zach took off of work and we spent four days going through the rubbish, uh, square, square foot by square foot. Mm -hmm. And just, uh, we had a voice recorder that I had here and we just made a, mm -hmm. a document in reverse of that, mm -hmm. that sure would have been a heck of a lot easier, um, with with an archive like you're talking about red and i really um if you could put something on a google calendar that you know every six months you you got rid of uh one of those you know photos or a video walking around and replaced it with another one yeah. with your new stuff <clears throat> um you would be i would hope that someone listens to this and you know two or three years down the road goes, man, thank God I did that because of this. And mm. that to me would be, would give the fire here uh, a little, a little more meaning, right? Yeah. <clears throat> well, you so, are, so I'm sorry, didn't want to interrupt you, but what already helped immensely or what I thought was <clears throat> not, not just fascinating, but like really impressed me was that soon after it happened, you kind of you you absolutely dealt with it openly, and also mm -hmm. your positive attitude with it, because for some people some people would absolutely lose their mind over it, and I, you I I hope you know how many people you help with that, and it's not just about like losing a shop, but with just perspective in general, what you did um, like helped immensely makes a lot of other problems look really small what happened to you and you <laughs> and you managed to have such a good attitude about it uh, you helped out a lot of people um, yeah they, that that makes it worthwhile to be honest because uh if hey man it, the more positivity we can throw out the better off we are selfishly and also the world right um yeah yeah and I, it sounds super like stupid to say but I don't know, man. I just firm believer. And like I say, Susanna was just like, everything that matters is here in the car. Yeah. Yep. In this stinky old cop car, you know. 
And, uh, you know, that's again, and we've had to revisit that multiple times of going, when you start going down the negative path, um, you know, I've, I've been fascinated with, uh, as I'm aging with neuroplasticity, you guys know this term, Yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, just how, um, acceptable to change we are mm-hmm. uh, in our brains chemically. And, um, and I've really, you know, tried to focus on that for myself personally of, of continuing to evolve and continuing to um, not get, you know, stuck in my ways. That, that's a phrase over here of, you know, just, ah, you know, the way, the way I used to do, it, it's way better. You know, it's mm. um, back in my days. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I've been super privileged to work with, um, well, Shaper, uh, origin you know the handheld cnc i was involved with them early on and um that's been really good for me and i gotta say that's a company that within days um the guys from there uh, reached out and said don't worry about uh the origin we're we're gonna we're gonna sort you out when you get when you're ready for it let us know that's good and yeah and Man, again, that's a that's a corporation, right? They're not supposed to have souls. <laughs> yeah. But I'll tell you what, that, that's a group of people there that really have taken care of me, and I'm super, super amped to uh, have the, my new it's, one it's here the now. It's They're about 20 kilometers away from me. No. <laughs> really? Festival, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's, um, you know, there's been a couple companies like that that have, have reached out and said, you know, um, just let us know and we will, uh, we'll help you out. And yeah, again, that's, you know, I, I know that, um, that I have a <clears throat> status or whatever you call it in infamy, the, in, infamy in the community. <laughs> and I really felt that, but you know, that doesn't always communicate to companies because, yeah. you know, weird is weird. Right. And they're kind of like, eh. but then you then you come across the ones that are like we don't care it's just we just want to do right and it's like yeah. that's super super cool yeah something to focus on yeah. maybe maybe yeah I, I just like to point out again like the whole um getting an inventory of not only your shop but also the house yeah yeah it doesn't need to be much. You can take pictures of all the shelves or open the drawers, just take a picture or just walk, walk around through the video. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And maybe that's even better actually, because then I can talk a bit about it and mention right. things and point out like, Ooh, like this might be a collector's thing. And I can focus on it and, and mm-hmm. put it back and move on and all of that. Yeah. But yeah, when it comes to the, insurance stuff, that makes things a whole lot easier. Yeah. The minutia that we have in, in our houses is <laughs> unbelievable. You know, it's yeah. just, we have a lot of stuff. We're blessed mm. to live in the first world, right? Mm. Um, and No, you, you live in the second world. We live in the first world. <laughs> True. I, <laughs> no, I live in 1.5. Okay, fair <laughs> enough, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's an amazing, you know, just look around your, your desk that you're sitting at right now and just there's hundreds of things on your desk and it's like, Oh, yes, it is. It, and there was <laughs> been money spent on each one of those. Yeah. yeah absolutely. So, so yeah, you're absolutely right. I think, um, that would be another, you know, bullet point that we could toss out into the, to the community is really focus on just doing that. And it's, it's easy cause you don't think it'll ever happen to you. Right. And, uh, from my perspective, there's a there's a less than zero chance that it could happen to you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you also want to start, Berkey, with a recommendation, a focus? Yeah, um, I have been tripping on history, Alice. Oh um, yeah. <laughs> just, and I know I've I've <laughs> I've pushed her before, but she's an English historian and. I, you know, I'm fascinated with the architecture of, of the, especially the Gothic era. Mm. Um, and uh, she visits places and has really good takes 
and um, insightful stuff that I learned something very frequently uh, by watching her Instagram uh, stories mainly, I think they are, or no, maybe they're... Uh, there's some reels and uh, yeah. she also does TikTok stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, I guess reels, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, for me, that's sort of my base layer is that architectural, I just have a fascination with, with architecture and how it influences humans and we have noticed. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we so, still need to get you over to Norway at some point to have you look at the state churches here. Absolutely. I, matter of fact, there's um, one of those on the coast of France that I was at in on Fleur, I think it is, uh, Red. Do you know that, mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that, that port? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was very similar to those, as I remember, Rasmus. Mm. But yeah, history, Alice, is, is um, you know, history's not boring. It's freaking fascinating because, you know, people were weird back then, too. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And, and something really weird, we are living history right now. Yeah. Depending on whether people write it down or not but and find it right. again. But, I mean, we are. Yeah. Absolutely. And people in the future and in the past, like, would shake our head about what we're doing at the moment. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> they will. They will. In the future, they will. Yeah. My grandfather, yeah. my grandfather was born in 1900, right? He saw yeah. world wars, pandemics. Uh, he saw moon landings. And I think he would be totally weirded out by this. Yeah. yeah. Right here. Yeah. You know what I mean? He would uh, <clears throat> too much. Absolutely, yeah. Yep. And this, what we're doing right here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which is magic. <laughs> it's stunning. Yeah. Can I go next? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, very much because of Maker Central, I want to focus on two people. Both of them amazing, maybe simple, but still really amazing creature creators. One is Maker Lucas with his puppets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, especially his fraggle like thing that he had yeah. on uh -huh. the tricycle that he had a radio controller for. So that thing oh, was. Oh, is that yeah, what that remote, was? A remote control. Oh. I was so cool. Uh, I, I, I posted a video about it uh, the other day, I guess yesterday for us recording time, but different for future people. Uh, so yeah, he is brilliant. He did a puppet making thing at the make with maker stand at maker central and there was so much fun to see all of the different kids and some grown-up kids come up and make yeah. things and run around and do the puppety hand things nice. uh, inclu including uh vandals who of course is just always in love with sticking his hand up a pu puppet's ass <laughs> uh, yeah. you had that one prepared <laughs> no yeah. i had i had uh, you should have <laughs> If I, if I were smarter, maybe I would have. Uh, the other person is Matt, Matt Clow, who is Funkworks on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And he uh, has created a, I don't know what to call it. It's not steampunk, maybe gear punk, kind of taking pistons and gears and cogs and making a fully posable little dude. Yeah. Unbelievable. That, I had so much fun running around because if you do it right, you can make its head spin two times around and then stop dead straight again. Mm -hmm. And I had so much fun just running after people and just flicking his head. And going, Boom. <laughs> 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 but yeah, no, uh, also him is doing a lot of really, really cool things with basically spare parts from his day job and other random bits he picks up and putting them together and making uh, metal puppets, basically. That's unbelievable. Really cool. Yeah. yeah. There will be links puppets for both great. of them but they are both really, really cool. And I hope both of them keep doing the weird, crazy, amazing stuff of just puppetry in various senses. Yeah. Do you guys remember the cat in Maker Central 19 who he had little puppets that were uh, yes. part wire? Barnaby that, Dixon, I think yes, talking about. Yes, yes, yes. Those were fascinating how lifelike they were. Mm -hmm. And also how good he is at uh, moving them around and giving them life and various yes. bits of character. Yeah. Insane. Yeah, pu puppeteer yeah. is something incredible. Yeah. yeah. It, it feels like it would be super fun because 
you're not you when you're doing it. You know, yeah, you're, kind of. you're that yeah. thing. Go, going into character. Right. Yeah. I have to do that at work every single day. It's really not. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be careful when you're living with muggles. <laughs> muggles. <laughs> yeah, and go for it. Okay. Um, so some um, of you might know James Hoffman, the guy with the coffee. Yes. Like he's yes. like a barista, like everything into coffee. Well, out of no particular reason, there's somebody who looks similar and um, the name is kind of similar to him, but he's on a whole nother level. It's called Hames Joffman. <laughs> also YouTube? <laughs> yes, or? it's it's a YouTube channel. And I, I don't know if it's if he has fun with his own channel or somebody just copied him. Well, it's it's not him because uh, that one has a um, beard, like kind of that oh, schna yeah. schna schnauzer beard, but um, <laughs> like his picture. And uh, they basically take all of his videos and cut them together so they don't make any sense at all. And <laughs> most of them, like they take his newest video, one week later you can watch it and it's got like the same name, an unhelpful review. And they just take it and they, they just cut it and chop it and it sounds like a normal interview with him or something something he would say but it does not make any sense at all so it's uh oh that's good the two ramisu like uh there was one about the two ramisu and uh the other one just no where they just cut him speaking no for i don't know like half a minute or something like that no but it's really like really funny mm. yeah wonderful I'll, I'll stick the links to that in. Yeah, I need to see that. Yeah. So if you like James Hoffman, it's double funny because you look at it and you go and like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, James Hoffman. Oh, what? and I have a second one. Sorry, oh, I forgot. Oh, sneaky bastard. Yes. <laughs> um, and that one's, a, well, it's called the In, In an Instant. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a photography channel with the guy shooting mostly with a Polaroid. Um, okay. And there was a video of him about a month ago where he's inside the last Polaroid factory in the world. And it's actually in the Netherlands. Ooh, and it wow. is uh, really in-depth, 43, 44 minutes. Really good. That's the nice. second one. That's Yeah, that's also really cool. Uh, Smarter of the Day, I think, just finished his third and last video on the Kodak factory. Okay, I haven't seen the third one. I have to see the first two. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's also, I think, closing up on an hour long, 50 minutes maybe. Nice. And it's it gets super nerdy and uh, Lavender Flow is involved, so of course he's really, really happy. And there's super intricate gears to punch all the holes that they on the film reel. And I, I, yeah, it's great fun. It's worth yeah. a watch as well. Oh, and you I have a me. third one. <laughs> no, fuck oh, off. wait. Come on. <laughs> it's, but it's it's one little thing I want to get um, rid of and probably not be interesting for a lot of people. But Pentax just released the second video of their uh, analog story. And now they officially confirmed that they're creating analog cameras. No. And they basically told him in the interview, the first one's going to have a fixed lens, like with automatic wind and automatic focus for beginners to like bring them into analog photography, but they're already designing it so the mechanisms can be used in following cameras. So they're talking mm. about a whole line of cameras now. And I'm cool. super excited for it, for a new analog camera. And I'm not talking about a 6,000 euro Leica, but an actual like normal affordable analog camera coming out. So it's come full circle now. Yes. Right. Yeah. Damn. That's cool. Yeah. That's fun. Cool. Okay. Red before Jan goes again. Yeah, hurry. And my fourth one. <laughs> Just kidding. So I have 23 today. <laughs> my first one. You should I'm going to start from this. the bottom and work my way up. Yeah, Number exactly. 23. Uh, it's um, Charlie G on Instagram. He's uh, young. He looks young. Uh, Cathedral Stone Mason. Uh, doing absolutely incredible work uh, on stones, obviously. Um, that that's the kind of uh, thing that is like very similar to blacksmithing to me. Like it, it, when I was a kid and I was looking at the old church or old cathedral, it was like, how the fuck did did 
they make that because it was like something that absolutely had no idea uh, about. But um, yeah, it's it still amazes me that people can turn stones into something beautiful just with a, a chisel and a hammer. So mm -hmm. um, go. He, he he has a pretty big following already on Instagram, but you you can. Uh, still go and, and give him support and love uh, Charlie G on Instagram uh, TikTok and everywhere I believe it's the same uh, we'll put a link in the in the thing Wonderful. yeah I follow uh, I think it's called the ginger mason mm -hmm. who's who's a female <clears throat> in England um, but she is employed at one of the cathedrals and mm -hmm. they're, did you send me her ages ago I might have because, because that sounds familiar. Yeah, she's very she obviously going through the apprenticeship or whatever you call it, but yeah. she's good and it is amazing to watch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's really weird like one thing is like the whole like oh, how do they get all of these weird details and how do you plan that out of just a monolithic chunk of stone? Mm -hmm. But also the fact like looking at the old renaissance uh, artist art arts artisans arty stuff and Most. how they make marble look soft yeah uh, is, it, is it uh <clears throat> something of persephone where you can see like is yes. it Hades' hands grabbing yes. into the flesh and you see the indents of where he's holding her yeah and things like that it's like that's freaky stone shouldn't work like that there is a guy on Instagram. I don't. I, I can't find his his name anymore. Uh, but I, I will try to find it again and put that in the 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 links that we put up and every piece of and everything. Um, the guys makes pillow from from stone, and when you oh, you look at the pillow, you you just want to put your lay your head on it because it's <laughs> it's so amazing. It really looks like a very soft pillow, and it's it's just incredible. And if you yeah. put yourself down too fast, you'll put yourself out. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 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 You exactly. don't want to have a pillow fight with that one. No. <laughs> no. no. I don't think you can lift it. <laughs> but you know, uh, the last time I was in Florence, Italy, my, uh, Suzanne and I were there in February, and we would get up and be at um, Michelangelo's David, that whatever yeah. that museum is. Yeah. First thing, right? Yeah. And uh, I think we visited it. him three or four times in a week. Mm, and yeah. a couple of those, we were able to just sit there alone with him for 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. And that same thing, you know, the veins, the veins on the back of, of his yeah. hand. It's just, how do you make a piece of stone <laughs> become he? after a while being and really studying him it, it felt like he was going to walk off the pedestal yeah. something else uh, fuck off Berkey. Can't, can't we just travel the world and just look at stuff together <laughs> yeah, let's go let's so go your, i want to go to first, thailand your yeah. first stop will have to be paris and and the louvre the museum, yeah because they are, they have some absolutely incredible stuff uh over there so yeah if you have never been to the Louvre and you're or coming to France or Paris uh, one of these days let's go uh, plan yes. <laughs> at least two or three days to see well, everything that they have I'll need a tour guide so get ready yeah excellent uh, where can people find you Berkey if they want to do a little bit of friendly stalking uh, pro probably uh, my first go-to nowadays I I'm kind of uh, backed off a little bit just because i've got my plate full but um instagram andy underscore berkey b-i-r-k-e-y is yeah. uh, my main haunt and shoot me a message and and we'll talk excellent <laughs> and if you want to follow, get a hold of us collectively you can do that at two-thirds focused and you can find me at rasmus lewin and lewin no and i'll be in my bunk again Bunker or bunk? Bunk. Bunk. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find me on the Nerd Inventor or Jan Maxwell. Wonderful. Tags. Thank you, Andy. Yes, Guys, thank you so much. Thank super you cool. Me. Out again. I don't thank know why you. we don't do this like every other week. Because we this, should. I, I would be here. <laughs> you'll, you'll always be welcome here. So yes. whenever you want to talk. 
absolutely. Just, well, I, I dearly love my my European community. Um, uh, it's just extra special place in my heart. So thank you, fellas. I completely appreciate Same. it. Yeah, likewise, man. Same. And bye bye. Yeah. Have a good week. Bye.